Hey, it's me, MLB. Here we go with chapter 8 of Touched. This one is titled Attack. Your dad stepped forward, aiming to touch you, but you stepped back so he couldn't reach you. You're trying to manipulate me again, you said softly, but with vermins in your voice. That's all you've ever done, twisted our emotions for your benefit. Your dad stopped, his eyes widening in shock. He's changed you already, he said darkly, his face changing from shock to disdain. Hawks has already turned you against us. What does Hawks have to do with any any of this? You suddenly said loudly. Yin, your mum gasped. Don't talk to your father like that. No, mum, you replied in a soft yet stern voice. We all are pawns to him. I can't use my quirk, but he can. What a hypocrite. You looked from your mum to your dad, shooting him an icy cold stare. Go to your room, Yin, your dad said sharply. As you passed him, he quickly shot an arm out and tapped your shoulder. Immense guilt overwhelmed you. You burst into tears and glared angrily at your dad, who seemed surprised by your expression. You made me feel this way, you sobbed. I know this isn't how I feel. Yin, your mum, mum gasped with surprise. What's come over you? I'm telling you it's Hawks, your dad growled. You turned and ran to your room, tears still flooding down your face under the influence of your dad's quirk. I know this isn't how I feel, you reminded yourself. Don't cave in. Don't go and apologise like you always do. Be strong. Do what you want to do for the first time in your goddamn life. You fell asleep that night with a heavy heart. Your dad's quirk had worn off after about 15 agonising minutes, but all of those thoughts that swirled around in your mind while you were under the influence had well and truly cemented into your psyche and left you feeling a little worse for wear. It was lunchtime the next day and you were starting to get hungry. Because you didn't sleep well last night, you were extra quiet and in desperate need of a pick-me-up, coffee, Red Bull, whatever your go-to is for an energy hit. I'm starving, but the thought of having to go and order food from the takeaway store just has my stomach churning already, you thought. You sighed and looked up at the clock. Maybe if I order a pizza from the app or something, I'll get them to deliver it to the front desk and leave a message for them that it's for me and hope the receptionist brings it down here. While you continued to mull over the best way to order food without any human contact, you heard voices in the hall. You're down here an awful lot, Hawks, the voice said with a laugh. Your head shot up. Hawks? But it's not home time yet, you thought with confusion as you looked at the clock again. Hey, chicken, Hawks' smooth voice called as he entered your office. You gave him a shy smile. Got your lunch, he said in his usual friendly tone as he pulled up a chair and sat down at your desk opposite you. It's the same as what we had last night because, well, that's the only food I know you like, he said with a chuckle. God bless this gorgeous flying ball of happiness and hotness, you thought. You couldn't speak. You were so overwhelmed by his kind gesture. Figured you might have been too shy to go out and order, so I saved you the trouble, he said with a wink as he lifted your favourite food out of the plastic bag that he had carried and passed it to you across the desk. Thank you so much, you whispered, your voice dripping with gratefulness. Welcome he said with a smile. He sat back and pulled out some chicken. You giggled. His eyes shut up and met yours. You giggled again, he said excitedly. Why the cute little giggle? Chicken, he said softly. Yep, again, he said with a laugh. Man, I love chicken. Isn't that like cannibalism? You asked curiously. I'm a hawk, he laughed. If I were a chicken and I was eating chicken, then yes, it would be cannibalism. But I'm a hawk and a hawk is a bird of prey he said, ripping into a piece of chicken with his teeth. You watched as he chewed the food thoughtfully, then swallowed. And chicken is prey, he added with a smirk, as he leaned back and took another mouthful. Fair enough, you said with a shrug. So, uh, what's your quirk again? He asked bluntly as he eyed you keenly. Your heart rate spiked and your face flushed with the fear of being back on that topic. I told you, you whispered as he dropped your gaze to your lap. I don't have one. Hawk slowly put his chicken down and leaned forward on the desk. You heard his chair squeak and you looked up, his golden eyes locking you in place as he stretched his wings slightly, making himself appear bigger. Level with me, in, he said lowly. A lump formed in your throat and you froze. Your heart was beating so hard it pulsated your vision and you couldn't take a proper breath in. You forget I'm a hero, he said in that seriously low tone. I can get information that other people can't. Fear gripped you and, you and rendered you speechless. Your heartbeats were almost painful now. You could feel the panic attack coming on as your breaths became more and more shallow. Hawks could see your distress rising and he backed off, tucking his wings in behind himself and sitting back to give you some space, but the damage had already been done and you burst into tears, shaking uncontrollably. 
Whoa, whoa, he said softly as he got up and ran around the desk to you. Hey, it's okay, it's okay, I'm sorry. He reached out and touched your arm, trying to draw your attention to him, but you were hyperventilating so badly he couldn't reach you with his voice. Damn, I was just mucking around, I didn't know it was going to happen like this, he thought, as he instinctively wrapped his arms around you. Feeling his warmth, it pulled you back to reality, and he bent his head to your ear. I'm so sorry, Ian, I'm so sorry, he whispered. I didn't realise you were so sensitive to that question. Ah, no shit, Sherlock, you thought. He beat his wings gently to pull himself back, holding your body against his. Although he was the one who caused the panic attack, you felt safe in his arms, and slowly but surely you calmed down, your terror being replaced by embarrassment as you buried your face into his chest. Oh man, the lack of sleep and what happened last night with Dad has me really touchy today, you wailed internally. After a few more minutes, Hawk spoke again. Are you feeling a little better? He asked tenderly. You nodded, still unable to speak. I'm really sorry. I won't ask that again, he said softly, and your death grip on his shirt relaxed. I, uh, I don't know anything about your quirk, or lack of quirk. I was just bluffing, but that was a dick move. I shouldn't have done something so cruel. It's okay, you whispered, not wanting to make him feel too bad because of the empath you were. You remained in his embrace until you felt better, and he slowly let you go, his golden eyes making contact with yours as you pulled back. You looked away while he cleared his throat and scratched the back of his head, looking away. If you ever need me, Yin, don't ever t hesitate to call, yeah? He said as he continued to avoid eye contact. Hawks is a big fat uh, asshole. Do da, do da. No, we love Hawks. Kinda, maybe? Maybe still? Anyway, stay tuned for chapter 9 coming tomorrow.